Christoph, I think you are what's called a functionalist, which means that however consciousness is created and, and, and is implemented, it doesn't matter the substrate, the, where you find it. If it functions the same way, whether it's in the wetness of our brain or in silicon of a computer or a, uh, a, a bunch of uh, mechanical rollers, however you can get the complexity, whatever you need, if it's functionally does what you want it to do, it can be conscious. Yes, I'm a functionalist when it comes to consciousness in the sense that as long as we can reproduce the functional relationship between all the different ner uh, neurons in the brain, I think we, we will have recreated consciousness. The, the, here, the, the difficult part is what do we mean by relevant relationship? Does it mean we have to reproduce the individual motion of all the molecules? Do we have to reproduce all the synapses? That's probably more likely. It's unlikely all the individual um, molecules. It's more likely that we have to recreate all the synapses. So we probably have to recreate all the wiring of the brain. Today, this is known as the connectome. So we probably have to recreate the entire connectome of the human brain in a different medium, like a computer. Then I do think if we can do that at the right level, this entity, this software construct, would be conscious. And it would have the same sort of conscious feelings if you could reproduce it exactly as you said that we do. We want to see red, this red table, and in the same way would have that inner subjectivity? In principle, again, the problem is can we reproduce the same level of complexity? No, that's, that's the given. We're, I'm giving you that you can give, you will well, these reproduce are, it. These are very dangerous philosophical mind games that philosophers like to play, and it's not clear whether we can actually do that in the real world. Whether we can actually, so for instance, one key difference between transistors and neurons is the following. One transistor is typically connected on a, in, the, in, the, in the central unit, computing unit yeah, of yeah, a computer, yeah. co connected to three or four other gates. One neuron is typically connected to 10,000 okay. uh, other neurons. So, so, so we're giving you that. We're giving you, a, it doesn't have to be next decade. It can be a thousand years from now. Yes, and in principle, this entity will have the same conscious state as my own brain. And you're comfortable with that? I, I'm comfortable with that, yes, why should it not be, yes. In a sense, it doesn't require any additional other magic ingredient. There's nothing magical. So the, in particular, this says there's no soul, you know, as a, as a, as a sort of, as conceptually, as, as, tra as traditionally conceived that sort of hovers above me and has this, you know, Casper, the, the ghost-like existence, okay. and that's somewhat, uh, somewhat attached to my brain and that, the, that wouldn't be attached to the computer. Right? So this theory, this sort of functionalism says it's all in the network and it's the functional relationship of the elements in this network that gives rise to consciousness. Now you also believe that, that when you have a, a sufficiently complex and integrated network, Th that that it, it, something emerges out of that that's it, 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 that you've called experience, which is different than the traditional laws of physics. Yes, in the sense that you have to expand the traditional laws of physics. So in physics, there's space, time, energy, mass, and things like that. Th those by by themselves are sufficient to explain the physics of the brain. Okay. The brain is subject to mm -hmm. the same law mm -hmm. of physics as any other object in the in the in the universe. But in addition, there's something else: there's experience, the experience of pain or pleasure or falling in love, and those need to you you you, you need to enhance the laws of physics to in, to account for them. Okay, okay. So when when you do that, however you do that, it will be applicable. I however you realize those kinds of functions, no matter what the substrate is. Correct. Now, is that an all or none phenomena? Do you is go along with no conscious and suddenly you hit it like, like, a, like a, an exploding atomic bomb and then it suddenly happens or is it a gradient? In a particular, so I can answer that, way, that question two ways. If I, take, if I take any one system, I think the system will, if it has a certain type of complexity, there's a particular type of theory that makes a very specific um, prediction. It says this in, the system has to have integrated information. It can be defined in a very specific technical sense. If that integrated information is different from zero, that, that system will have some conscious experience. It might be minimal. It just might be it has some feeling of being versus non-being. Versus I can have, you know, any human can have vast number of states, right? All, all the conscious experience I've ever had, it's a unique experience. So, so, so as uh, in the biological world, so if you go from a, a simple b bacterium to a, to a worm, uh, to, to, to uh, a, a, a small, uh, fl fl to a fly, to a small rodent, to a primate, you'd have so something like a gradient. Correct. Okay, and it would be something to feel like, to be like, uh, a bee. Uh, to be, yes. to be a bee. I do believe it feels like, so bee, for example, like, example, they're beautiful creatures. She has 800,000 neurons, 
And I do, but and the the neurons, in fact, are ten times denser packed than neurons in the human brain. Mm. They're immensely complex, vastly more complex than we can understand today. Bees are capable of very sophisticated behavior, including they can recognize individuals, they can do this dance, um, and I do believe that it feels like something to be a bee. Now, that's not like in the Woody Allen movie, you know, that, that, that the bee sort of remembers, has a voice like we do. Mm -hmm. but, the, but I do b believe it's quite possible that the bee has some simple states, like it loves the, the, the smell of the yellow nectar and the honey, and it has fear, something like that. OK, so w would you say the same thing would be in a computer? So maybe we won't have computers as sophisticated as the human brain for another a hundred, several hundred years. Some people think a lot sooner. But uh, however it's going to happen, we have a, we'll have a growth. And, at some point it will happen. So in today's computer, is there a little bit of a feeling there too? I don't know. Uh, because <laughs> you think it's possible? I think it's uh, quite possible. I think it's more likely at the internet because if you look at the internet as a whole, it has you know a few billion nodes. Each node by itself, you know, it has um, hundreds of millions of transistors. Yeah. That, co in particular, the interconnected there begins to approach interconnectedness you find in bio in biological systems. So it may well be possible that the internet collectively as a whole has some conscious state. I don't think you can rule it out today categorically.